Welcome in to this edition of PDL Weekly. My name is Nicholas Murray. Very pleased to be joined by PDL Senior Director Ryan Brooks. And Ryan, the fairy tale came to an end on mm. Wednesday night for the remaining PDL teams in the US Open Cup. All mm. four teams eliminated. Reading United, FC Tucson, Des Moines Menace, and in particular the Ocean City Nor'easters mm. really challenged the Philadelphia Union. Got a late goal, almost took the game to extra mm. time, but just incredibly, incredibly strong performances throughout the tournament, but particularly against MLS opposition by all four teams this week. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was extremely impressed with, with all of their play. Um, there were, there were no blowouts. Um, you know, it was extremely competitive. I thought that um, th a lot of the teams played well. You know, Ocean City, as you said, in particular, uh, really, I, I thought it was going to go into extra time, and, and hopefully, uh, <laughs> I was hoping for PKs, and, and uh, but obviously that didn't happen. But it was, it was a strong performance from all four teams. Some very good performances individually as well. I thought Reading United goalkeeper John mm -hmm. McCarthy had a great performance against the Red Bulls and mm -hmm. kind of kept the team in the game there a little bit. And, and some very nice stuff from the Des Moines Menace. With, uh, it, it was very nice for Scott Angervine to get a chance to go back and face his former team there. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, through their, their Des Moines left side, did a, did a really good job. Um, and, and I think that um, just from a development standpoint, um, just being able to, basically 56 players, you know, you have 14 players that were able to play in four games. So 56 players uh, was just huge development for them, uh, in which, which they were able to really, um, you know, really embrace the uh, MLS culture. Interesting tidbit that just came out of the Philadelphia Union's weekly press conference. Uh, John Hackworth, their head coach, saying that there were three players from Ocean City that impressed them. They might be keeping tabs on <laughs> them, maybe bring them in for trials later in, later this year. So something for those guys, something uh, kind of an indication of the spotlight that the Open Cup brings and the opportunity it offers players. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, you know, these guys get, get looks from MLS clubs. They're playing against the clubs, and, and obviously these guys are, you know, uh, could be 18, 19, 20 years old, and, you know, they're going to get the looks because the MLS wants the, wants the best players, and, and obviously those are uh, players on the teams that, uh, that are really showing that they, they deserve to be there. Now, a guy that is in the spotlight for his mm -hmm. performance last week, our PDL Player of the Week, was Pete Karinji from the Baltimore Bohemians. Mm -hmm. and great performance against the NJ Luso Rangers. Scores all four goals, all in the second half. Just great job by him. Great job by Adam Black from Oklahoma City FC as well with a hat trick in their win against the El Paso Patriots. We're starting to see some real mm -hmm. star performances come around in, in some of these PDL games, yeah. in regular season games now. Yeah, uh, four goals in the second half. I mean, we've, we've talked about it the last couple of weeks where, uh, you know, the, the first, uh, you know, it was four goals and a, and a half, and then it became three goals and two assists in, in, uh, in one of the games. And then now it's it's four goals in, uh, in the second half. So, uh, you know, he did, he did a fantastic job. And, and obviously, to get that win against the Rangers. Um, you know, he was, he was integral in that part. Very interesting results over the weekend as well. Mm -hmm. We see the River City Rovers grab a dramatic late victory against the Michigan Bucks. First mm -hmm. time Michigan's lost at the Canton Cup in their history, so big kudos to the Rovers for mm -hmm. that. Uh, any other results that jumped out at you? Uh, I feel like uh, Ottawa's game, you know, Ottawa, Ottawa being able to come back and scoring two goals in the second half to, to re beat Real Boston was a, was a huge, a huge accomplishment for them, and, uh, and I, was, I was impressed with their uh, performance. Well, Ottawa's got a big game coming up this mm -hmm. weekend, and there's, there's a few games around the place. Mm -hmm. I, I think one of the games I'm really looking at is the Ocala Stampede mm -hmm. against the Mississippi Bria. Mississippi, two nice road wins to start the season. This is their home opener. Ocala's 1-1 one one right now coming mm -hmm. into this game. Big test for them as as they try to get because Mississippi looks awfully strong this year. Yeah, they, they have. They, they started a little bit late, uh, so obviously a couple of the teams got a got a couple games under their belt. Uh, but obviously they went on to the um, to the into the road and got got two wins. Ocala is obviously going on the road now, uh, so we'll see what happens. But Ocala obviously had you know a little bit of time off because of the of the Open Cup loss. Uh, so, you know, they had some time to rest and, you know, we'll see what happens this coming up weekend. A couple of other interesting games coming up. We've got the Des Moines Menace facing the Thunder Bay Chill in what is one of the big rivalries mm -hmm. in the Heartland Division. And then what might be turning into a new rivalry in the Mid-South Division with the Austin Aztecs hosting Oklahoma City FC. Now, Austin edged past Oklahoma City mm -hmm. FC 2-1 in their first meeting, mm -hmm. but Oklahoma City's reeled off three straight wins since then. This could be a very good game at House Park. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I think that the three teams in, in that division right now now are Oklahoma City, Laredo, and, uh, and, and Austin. And those three teams, it's going to be a real battle to see who gets the, uh, the one and two slot. Um, but I've been very, very impressed with Oklahoma City so far and great crowds and just a great environment. Interesting game Sunday night as well. It's always fun when we see the MLS U23 teams mm -hmm. get together and 
the Whitecaps U23s visit the Sounders U23s. This is an important game for the Sounders U23s because they haven't gotten off to the, the best starts. Mm -hmm. Important game for them to, to, to get a home win in this contest, I think. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit of a slow start. Um, but, you know, um, you know their, their players are obviously starting to really uh, to start to gel, hopefully, in, in this game in particular against a quality opponent. Um, but, you know, obviously they were involved in the Open Cup, so that, that maybe turned a little bit of their attention to that. Um, so it should be, uh, you know, it should be interesting. They, uh, they got the, the game against the Whitecaps, and, you know, uh, I'll, be, I'll be interested to see what the score of that game is. Now, Friday night, the Sounders U23 games will be available on USLNation.com as they host the Washington Crossfire at Starfire. That game you can watch live. We'll have updates throughout the night on the USLPDL Twitter account, at USLPDL, as the final scores come into us. And make sure to check the website for game previews and game reports throughout the weekend. Well, thanks for joining me, Ryan. Hope you join us again next week for another edition of PDL Weekly. But for now, hope you have a good evening.